I have to admit, when the fellow called me and asked me to participate today, it has been about five years since I've done any spoken word. I primarily do stand-up comedy, so I have my notes here, if you'll indulge me. I have a couple of pieces I would like to share with you. The first one is entitled, Raising Your Kids. I guess I should have known it would be you on the telephone. You see, I was sitting here all alone. My wife, she was gone. She was somewhere with your kids. Your kids, your kids, in spite of what you did. That's what you like to say to try to mess with her day. When you call into our home and she answers the telephone, but you see, it never works. It never did. She's too busy raising your kids. You try to demand the respect you know you'll never get it because you made sneaky plans with some two-bit man. Yeah, that's what you did. And you weren't even smart enough to keep your business here. Now Shirley's raising your kids. Better than you ever did, I might add. And you know, that's sad. There was a time when you had everything that was mine. And that should have been fine. But then what did I do? I gave you extra too. And look what you did. Turns out it was good luck the way you messed up. Now Shirley's raising your kids. When that telephone rang, it was like a gun went bang, shooting inside my head at things that are already dead. You see, you tried your sexy voice, but it was nothing but noise. Because now, Shirley whispers in my ear. Now my telephone rings, and that's a curious thing. See, I remember the day when I'd listen to you say just about anything. But you threw it all away. What can I say? For a brother with a jerry curl, you messed up these kids' world. You messed me up too. Now you want me to listen to you? Okay, but this is the last time. That day is long gone. Time don't wait. You see, it moves on. But since I answered the phone, and I am home alone, I'll take your call. You're crying and all. But this is the last time. I'm kind of curious just to hear, after over 10 years, what you could have to say. And you know, in a strange, strange way, I'm surprised you had the gall to even make this call. Apparently, you don't recall all the stuff you put us through when you changed your mind that day. You just had to be footloose and fancy free. Now you want me to interrupt my Saturday to hear what you have to say? Okay, but this is the last time. You need to hurry though, because I've got to go. Girl, I've got grass to mow. And then when I'm through, I've got to clean the pool so it'll be sparkling clear when Shirley gets here. Gets here with our kids. That's right, our kids. After all of what you did, see, you were out there tripping, and Shirley was busy slipping advice to those little girls about being a woman in a mean, mean world. That little boy you left behind, he's going to grow up and find a woman just like mine. Cute smile, big Alabama behind. She touched his heart and his mind in a way you never did. Yeah, that little boy, now he's Shirley's kid. You know, I used to be the kind of brother who wouldn't mind hanging up in your face and getting back to my day. But now it's different for me. You see, I've got that inner peace. So go ahead. Seek your release. Go ahead, since you've got me on the phone and my wife and kids aren't at home. Just please don't take too long. Try to trying to make yourself feel better. You know, maybe you should have written me a letter. <laughs> Save your pride and your dignity. Don't say how much you still miss me. Don't wonder again what went wrong. You know, that's a tired, tired song. And the kids, girl, yeah, you're not blind. I know you can see they're doing just fine. This has really turned out to be a waste of my time. Can't you find something better to do with your dime? Anyway, I'm glad you called, despite the interruption and all. Things happen sometimes in a strange, strange way. Your phone call actually brightened my day. 
Yeah, this car really let me know. I did the right thing by letting you go. But the best thing that happened is what the good Lord did. He hooked me up with Shirley, and now we're raising our kids. <laughs> And this one is called Beautiful People. We are a beautiful people. Black as night, manila tan, 14 shades of brown too. Long hair or short, wavy or nappy, and nowadays, any color we choose. From the gritty inner city, deep in the backwoods, and all points in between. In washrooms, and yes, boardrooms, working with our hands, working with the land, proud, black, and beautiful. Of all the faces present at the table of American Opportunity, only ours came uninvited. Dragged in chains, stuck on slave ships, stuck on grave ships, working with our hands, yet indelibly woven into the fabric the world now knows as America. Beautiful women, mothers, sisters, lovers, the delight of God's eye. He smiled when he made you and said, this is good. Strength and beauty everlasting, the natural seed of all else that is lovely. My people, my people, forced through the middle passage, forced through adversity, tempered by injustice, made patient and wise through the passage of time. We are black people. We are a beautiful people. You think you're going to say something else, and then he tricks you, and he says something that just grabs you, pulls you in, and you're like, wow. Did he just say that? And he did. Spody Walker. Now, I got a little something added on to what I'm going to do. I like to make that on the street court, because I come from the street. You know, I remember when I was about four years old living in Houston. My grandmother taught me to walk the streets by myself, cross the highway, and come back safely. And as I grew, I never broke out of that. I used to love just to walk the streets. And there's so much that I came across, so many people I met, I met the actuality of it. So in my poetry, this is what I give you. I give you um, verbal art, I say, from the streets. Just go with me, we're gonna freestyle this thing. <clears throat> Please, do not laugh at me. My struggle is not funny. I have asked for nothing. Do you not see that my struggle is more than money? I hold my head up because again, I must pull myself up. Sometimes life could be like climbing to the sky on an invisible road. So deep inside of me, I know, I know that I must hold on. I know that I can cope. That's why I pray. But everybody may stay up late, thinking of ways to get their life straight. So deep inside of me, I know, I know that I must hold on. I know that I can cope. That's why I pray. But everybody may stay up late, thinking of ways to get their life straight. God, you truly must trust. So remember the reality, because money only goes so 